Good morning, good morning. And welcome to our Sunday services here at Holy and Holy, uh, Holy and Holy Life Changing Ministries International. Today is the first Sunday of November 2021, and it is going to be a blessed day. I have the honor and privilege of being the, the worship leader today, and we just have two quick uh, requests. To one, to set your expectation meter on high, because today you're going to receive a, receive a word from God. You're going to receive a touch from God. So adjust your expectations to a very high level. And now the second one is real easy. I'm asking you to turn to Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, verses nine and 10. And for our reading of the word, the reading of the word is as follows. Then Nehemiah, the governor, Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, don't mourn or weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God, for the people had all been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is the sacred day of our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we ask you now for your presence. We ask you now for your anointing. We thank you now, God, because we know your word says in Philippians 2 and 10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth shall confess and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. We also know and we thank you and rejoice now that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our restoration. The joy of the Lord is our peace. The joy of the Lord is our righteousness, and the joy of the Lord is our answered prayer. Now, almighty God, have your way in this place according to your will, according to your word, and according to your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God with the voice of triumph. Come on, put those hands together. We're gonna see revival. We're gonna see revival. We're gonna see revival. In our Anybody believe that? Hey. Say like a fire. By your word. We're all united. Set. We are your dwelling place. So have your. Oh! 
want to see it, say in this place. Say. In this place. So, Father, we lift our hands to you, and we acknowledge that you are the God of miracles. And we ask right now that you will pour our revival. We posture ourselves for a move of God. We ask for the wind of heaven to blow and to take over. We're ready for you. So we pray this by faith. We say, open up the windows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, that was just, that just touched my heart. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Carlene. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Michelle C. Thomas, we want to welcome each and every one to our virtual service here at Holy and Whole Life Changing Ministries International. We know you're signing in by Zoom or Facebook. You're here in Virginia. You're here nationally. You have a few international people too. We just want everybody to know we welcome you. We're so glad that you are here with us. Uh, we know that this will be time very well spent. Amen? Amen. And at this time, we're... Uh, We've come to the part of our service that we call TAG, which is touch and agree. So when we are in person, this is when we pause and we greet each other with hugs and smiles uh, or waves or elbow bumps, depending on what's happening with COVID. Uh, but seeing that we are virtual today, we want to stop everybody, stop and wave to each other. We are so happy to see each other, right? And so we come in agreement that the Lord will meet with us here today. Amen. Amen. 
I invite you now to listen to our announcements. So today is Communion Sunday. It is the first Sunday uh, of, of the month of November and it will be Communion Sunday. So right after the service, uh, we'll be having our, our communion. Thank you. Uh, every uh, Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we have our worship service and we are fed with the word. We also have, after the announcements, we have our youth service where the, the young people are moved into a breakout room where they're fed the word as well. So we thank the Lord for that. On Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m., we have our life application Bible study, and it is facilitated by our assistant pastor, uh, Pastor Marion King. And we are, this is the time when we take the time to break down the word that we're here on Sunday. It is so nourishing. I just invite everybody, put that in your, on your Google calendar, 730, just pause and uh, participate with the word. Amen. Our in-person worship service will be Sunday, November 21st at 11 a.m. This will be at the Pavilion at Ashburn Station, 43635 Greenway Corporate Drive. That's in Ashburn, Virginia. So we look forward to seeing everyone there on Sunday, November 21st at 11 a.m. Our church has daily uh, prayer call. Uh, the times are 5 a.m., 12 noon, and 8 p.m. So we invite everyone to, to participate, you know, bring your requests to the Lord. Uh, the number that you call is 605-562-8401. And then there's a passcode of 570-5744. So this year, uh, Holy and Ho is celebrating our 15th church anniversary. We are so very, very excited and we want to invite everyone. So uh, please take note of the, the dates. Uh, the first uh, event will be Friday night worship. That will be Friday, November 19th. And it will be at the Embassy Suites. Uh, Dulles North. The address is 44610 Waxpool Road, and that's in Ashburn, Virginia. We will be very blessed. Uh, we'll be having our, our guest speaker will be Dr. Decker Tapscott, and you know we're in for a treat. On the Saturday, uh, uh, November 20th, we will be back again at the Embassy Suites in Dallas North, 44610 Waxpool Road. This will be for our prayer breakfast. And uh, uh, we welcome, we, we are going to be having blessed with Pastor Jesse Radford, uh, the pastor of the room. So the cost for the prayer breakfast uh, will be $60.00. Or if you'd like to get a table, it will be $600. $600. So we're really excited about this. This is time and money well spent, and we're looking forward to it. Then we will cap off the, uh, the celebration with Sunday morning service. That will be Sunday, November 21st. And we'll be back at church at the Pavilion at Ashburn Station uh, on Greenway Corporate Drive in Ashburn. And our speaker will be Dr. Ralph Martino. He's a friend and mentor of our pastor and, and he's a wonderful, wonderful speaker. So we look forward to everyone coming out and celebrating our 15th church anniversary with us. Amen. Okay, it's giving time. <laughs> it's giving time. Uh, you know, Malachi 3 verse 10 talks where the Lord says, bring you the tithe into the storehouse and prove me now. And Luke 6 38 said, give and it shall be given unto you. So here we are holy and whole. We believe in giving. Uh, giving our tithes and our offerings. So we invite everyone to sow a seed, not just because it's a very fertile soil and, and you can see the evidence of uh, what we're giving into, but the Lord also has blessed us 
in return in many, many, many ways, not just financial, many ways. So there's several ways that we can give. There's the online uh, giving holyandhole.org slash donate or, or the paypal.me forward slash HWLCMI, or you can text to give. You text the word give to 833-203-6805, or we also, uh, the, you have the option of the cash app, uh, which is um, dollar sign HWLCMI. So once again, thank you for, uh, for being here and God bless you. Thank you so much, Sister Colleen. You did a wonderful job. And now I have the, the pleasure and honor of introducing our speaker for today. It is none other than our senior pastor and founder, Michelle C. Thomas. If you've not had a chance to listen to our pastor, you need to get ready and get prepared. And so I'm going to ask you now to go get a writing implement, some notes, and get prepared, get, a, get your seatbelt on, uh, adjust your seat, lock your door, because you are want to, want to get every crumb and every morsel of the rhema word that will be coming forth today. So according to our program, according to our agenda, the next speaking word that you will hear will be none other than that of Michelle C. Thomas after our worship song. Thank you. There's been a drought for way too long. We need to sing our freedom song. Oh, Lord, we need a touch from you. We really need a touch from you. Lord, we need to hear your voice. Our hearts are open. We touch from you we really touch from you
to hear from no other one will ever do oh lord we need a touch from you we really need a touch from you have thine own way eat lord have thine Worship with me. Thou art and I am the clay. So mold us and make us after thine will. While I am waiting, Lord, And I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we need a touch. Lord, we need a touch from you. We thank you. We are just happy to be here today. 
Uh, can you just put your hands together and just congratulate the Lord? Oh my God, can you just begin to worship our great God? God, you've been so merciful. You've been so kind. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You woke us up with the activities of our limbs. You started us on our way. God, you put love in our hearts for our families, in our hearts for our communities and for this nation. Lord, we thank you for the young people that's joining in today. Day. I see TJ all the way from Alabama. Lord, we thank you for the college students that have you on their mind this morning. Lord, I bless your name for the families all the way in Texas. Lord, that's joining in. We thank you for the Abernathy's. Lord, we giving you honor and glory as you strengthen the family, oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for those who have lost loved ones this week who are going through the funeral processes and the home going processes with their families. Lord, we ask that you would give them strength and comfort and peace, God, not just in it, but peace with it. We bless your name. We give you glory and we give you honor and we welcome you into this blessed place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are continuing in our sermon series. Listen, I'm so excited. I don't want to skip over anything, but I am ready to get into this word. Listen, if you could just turn your Bibles to Genesis 45. We have been on this subject for 45 weeks, God's perfect plan, his will and his design for our lives. And I don't know about you, but I have been blessed for it. And it almost seems like the scriptures are stalking me a little bit. Have anybody ever noticed this trend that before you can get to a thing that the scriptures have already given you the answer that you are already finding out where you getting ready, walk into next week. Has anybody ever felt like the scriptures was kind of stalking you a little bit. Come on now, you can unmute and say, yeah, you know, but I love it because God is already prescribing his kingdom recipe for our lives. He's already making the ways of escape and he's already given us the principles that we must stand on to be successful, not just for ourselves and for the families, but for a kingdom model so others can follow into his best blessed place. If you can just Turn your Bibles really quickly. Genesis 45. And let me read about 10 verses, the first 10 verses of Genesis 45. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. Joseph could not stand it any longer. There were many people in the room, and he said to his attendants, out all of you. So he went along with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians could hear him. And the word of it carried quickly to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brother. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They could not talk. His brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery. But don't get upset. Don't be angry with yourselves for selling me into this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years. And there will be neither plowing or harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. Mm. Let me say that again. So it was God who sent me here, not you. Let me hold on, let me just say that. It was God that put me in this predicament, not you. It was God that found need to use me to bless you, not you. Oh my gosh. Oh, come on, pastor. I love that it was God who sent me here, not you. 
And he is the one who made me an advisor. He is the one that made me an advisor to Pharaoh, the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all Egypt. Now hurry back and tell my father, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me master over all the land of Egypt. So come down to me immediately. I love verse 10. I can't resist it. I was going to stop at nine, but let me go into 10. 10 says, you can live in the region of Goshen where you can be near me. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. You can live in the... <laughs> in the region of Goshen, so you can be near me with all your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds and everything you own. I will take care of you there. You can live in Goshen where you can be near me. You can't be where I am, but you can be. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> my, my, you my. can't. <laughs> You can be near me. You don't have to be up on me. You don't have to live in my house. We Ooh. don't have to share the same place. But because God has destined me to take care of you, you can live near me. Now you don't have to be upset while your family don't come around and they don't participate in stuff that you're doing because God has just allowed them to live near you. <laughs> Oh, I love this. This is in the Bible. I'm not making it up. It's in the Bible. So let's get down to business. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, we pray that your word will come alive in our souls. Lord, we pray that you will illuminate our minds so we don't miss your message and we can put into action in our daily lives. Give us wisdom. Expose your word to us. Expose your heart to us. And we'll give you all the glory and honor for it in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Amen again. Listen, this is a very, very interesting chapter, and it has many life lessons, lessons that you can immediately take part in. There's a couple of lessons. I just want you, I know our church takes really uh, good notes, corpious notes, so I want you to take uh, a couple of notes really quickly before we can get started. I'm going to give you four principles of reconciliation today. Four principles of reconciliation today. I'm going to give you two practical lessons from Joseph's story about your relationship with God. Two practical lessons from Joseph's story about your relationship with God. And number three, I'm going to give you five blessings of reconciliation. I want to respect our time, so I want to just kind of put that outline for you right away. But uh, when, as the story opens up, as Genesis 45 opens up, um, the brothers have completed their test, if you will. They have completed their test that Joseph has been um, putting them through a series of tests to discover their heart, to discover if they have grown past the part of hate. How many people know that haters do what haters do? that you can grow up with haters. And even if they turn 35, even when they turn 50 or even 60 years old, or in the case of some of my haters, almost 70 years old, and they still will hate you. Doesn't matter if you shed a womb. It doesn't matter who was first in the womb and who was last in the womb. It doesn't matter if you share parents, if you got the same mama and the same daddy or different mama and a different daddy. It doesn't matter that haters just hate and that's what they do. Has nothing to do with what placement. Uh, are you the baby, the knee baby, the oldest child? It does, haters just hate. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It, it doesn't need a reason. It doesn't have any facts or figures to it. Haters are just filled with something uh, called hate and it just comes out, oozes out over time unless they submit to the will of God. 
My unless God. they repent, unless they turn from their wicked ways, unless God reveals their error, their man uh, manifestations to them, then they will have a change of heart and act differently. And unless there is repentance, the actions will always be the same. Come on. Oh, I wish I had. No, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, unless there is repentance, the hater actions will always be the same. There are two things that we find right off of the rip in 45 that God is literally giving us a lesson in the pathway to reconciliation in 45. In fact, he started this lesson some, some chapters before, but it comes to full head and it comes to fruition on 45. In 45, in Genesis 45, Joseph shows us that the key to be to being reconciled with those who've hurt us either in our family or outside of our family, a part of corporations. Come on, somebody, you know you can have cor corporate hurt. What about church hurt in our churches, in our neighborhoods? It doesn't matter where the hurt or the fence, uh, offense takes place. There is a key or some keys to being reconciled with those who have hurt you deeply. There are two keys that we find in, in, in Genesis 45. The first key, the key to reconciliation is your attitude. The first key that we find implemented or exemplified in verse 45 or chapter 45 is the attitude. And we see this throughout Joseph's entire experience. His attitude was the same. You never saw him with the pity party, even when he was in the pit. How many people know that you can be in the pits in your life and not have a pity party? Oh, my, 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 my. Secondly, the key to your attitude or making sure you have a kingdom attitude or a God-centered attitude is submitting yourself to the sovereign God. The key to reconciliation is your attitude and the key to the attitude that postures you for reconciliation is making sure that you are submitted to the sovereign God. Look at it. Joseph always had a God attitude. He always had a, a God at, even when he was uh, first asked to uh, interpret the dreams. He said interpretation come from God. You remember that? What about when he was in Potiphar's house and was accused of, of, of trying to rape Potiphar's wife? He said, how could I sin against God? Everything that he did was related to God. His gifts were related to God. Hello, somebody. The way he operated in his gift, his integrity, all of that was mapped to God, never to himself. His attitude was about God. What pleases God? What doesn't please, is, please God? That's interesting, isn't it? If you want to be reconciled with folk, you're going to have to know that God has to be in it. You have to know that sometimes God calls folk to act crazy <laughs> or he used the craziness that folks operate in and he used it to bring about glory in the earth realm. God uses the unusual circumstances. Sometimes we're even hurt as we are part of those circumstances. You wonder, well, why is it necessary for me to be in a pit? I can show you glory in another way, God. Why is it necessary for me to be caught up in a scandal? Why is it necessary for me to go through a divorce? Why is it necessary for me to go? Come on, somebody. I can show you glory just fine. Fitz didn't have to die. The glory I was showing you before Fitz died, the glory I showed you while Fitz, we was dealing with it, and the glory that I was go I'm going to show you. To me, it's all the same. I'm not backing up one iota. It's not about your glory. It's about his glory. It's about how people see God in you. How people see 
God in you rising above circumstances. It's not that you can rise above circumstances. It's that God is allowing you to do it and allowing people to watch it real time. Oh, that doesn't sound like something people want to shout about. But the remarkable thing about Joseph was not his brilliance. It wasn't his good looks. Now, it did say he was fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's a Pastor Michelle-ism. It did say he was good looking. <laughs> Come on now. But it wasn't about his brilliance or his good looks. It was all, it wasn't about, um, you know, Joseph's administrative ability and his ability to lead. It was all about God's presence in his life. It was all about the Holy Spirit being present in Joseph's life. I wish I had somebody to say, whatever circumstance I'm in, the Holy Spirit is going to show up and God's going to get the glory. Whatever situation I'm in, I find myself in, whether I put myself in that situation, somebody put me in the situation, I'm going to give God glory. I'm going to do like Joseph did. I'm not going to dwell on the unfair treatment. I'm going to dwell on my attitude. I'm going to dwell on my relationship with God. I'm going to dwell on loving people, even when they're not lovable. Oh, I wish I could say amen to this. Come on, B. If you can't a say amen, just say, come on. <laughs> amen. amen. <laughs> if you can say amen, that means you scored 100 on that test. Even come the on. pastor can't say amen. All I can say is, come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to give you four principles of reconciliation because we see this. We see Joseph meeting with his brothers. And we see his brothers being given food by Joseph. And at the point where he should have released them, Joseph couldn't hold it anymore. How many people have ever been in a situation where you can't hold it anymore? You just can't keep quiet. You can't uh, not address the elephant in the room. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I just can't keep acting like y'all didn't mistreat me. I can't just keep acting like I didn't know who you were. I just can't keep acting like I didn't see what you said and I didn't read your email and you didn't say this and you didn't say that. I just can't keep acting like you haven't injured me. And so I have to address the elephant in the room. Do I have one person that can unmute and say, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. Yes, ma'am. I, yes, I know what you're talking about. Mm. Come on. And so here's where the blessings going to come in. Because as I heard you unmute, I could hear the hurt and I could hear the get backness. Because ain't nothing like folk that been hurt and need to be tightened up. Come on, somebody. Sister Robin, I know we shared the language that we can tighten people up. Hello, somebody. Oh, you, all the way. I can get you all the way together. I can get you all the way together with the Queen's language. Hello, somebody. Or I can go straight from Holy Ghost to Hood and Hood to Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I am bilingual. I speak Holy Ghost and Hood. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm trilingual. I speak hood, Holy Ghost, and the Queen's language. Oh, come on, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. And so here are four principles of reconciliation that's going to challenge your heart because reconciliation is a work of God and it's the work of the heart. I'm not talking about faking like you all right and you in a good place with somebody. I'm not talking about toleration. I'm talking about true reconciliation where you can forgive and you can move on and you can serve and love and support without looking back and bringing up the past. Reconciliation. Number one, the first principle of reconciliation is that reconciliation can never happen without revealed truth and genuine repentance. 
genuine truth, I'm sorry, revealed truth, which is God has to reveal the truth in that situation. Because sometimes we misread situations. Sometimes we think that folk just hate us because they mean an evil. We don't know that sometimes people hate because hate is uh, a, a implied actions that maybe there have been a little nudging on the part of other folks to kind of gin up this hate and create a story. Oh, I wonder if somebody understands, somebody helped you hate me. Somebody helped you think like this about me. Somebody helped you, come on somebody. All the brothers didn't just hate Joseph at the same time. They listened to the other brothers who had some hate in them. Oh, come on, somebody. You understand what I'm saying? So reconciliation can never happen without revealed truth. What's the truth behind this situation? Who did what and why? Revealed truth. Oftentimes, perpetrators won't tell you they did it. So God has to reveal it to you so that you can let it go. God had to reveal it to me so it is complete, it is final. I don't have to depend on this person to be 100% honest with me, that God just showed me what, has God ever just showed you who the culprit was? Come on, oh, you don't have to say amen. Has God just come to you and say, you know what, this person... <laughs> So when God shows up and he reveals to you the heart of the matter, then repentance can start taking place because now you're stopping, you're stop looking for sorry. And you start looking for actions, demonstrative actions, demonstrated actions, repentant into works. I wish I had somebody that will understand like Joseph had moved far beyond his brothers responding in, Joseph, we are so sorry. We are so sorry. If he needed that, he would have told them early on that he was Joseph. He knew that he couldn't reconcile just by words alone, that he needed to see the brother's actions. He needed to see re repentance in motion. And that's why he took them through a series of tests. During the series of tests, they were able to prove their heart of repentance. Oh, I wish I had one person to say, yeah, Pastor, I get it. Oftentimes, you know, uh, it, it seems like reconciliation doesn't work. Have you ever been in a situation where you said that you were going to be reconciled? You worked together for two weeks. Something happened that reminds you of the situation that was old. And you just said, you know what? I can't fool with that person. That's why I'm fool with them. See, this can't happen to Joseph. And he guaranteed that he wasn't going to have a, a temporary reconciled situation, that the reconciled situation he was engaging with with his brothers would be permanent because he had trusted and he saw his brothers had a change of heart. When they came in and they took ownership of what happened, when they came in and they said, hey, listen, instead of sending Judah back or Benjamin back, we gonna come back and take the punishment together. That was totally different from the way that they had operated in the past. So reconciliation can never happen without revealed truth and without genuine repentance that has demonstrative actions. Stop listening for sorry and start looking for evaluative actions. God is gonna always bring full disclosure. God will always, he never operates outside of full disclosure. God will always bring full disclosure. Number two, wait on God's timing. This is for the four principles of reconciliation. Wait on God's timing. The time had come for Joseph to reveal his identity to the brothers. Remember, he could have done it several times before. There were other times where he, it seemed like this would be a good time to reveal his identity to the brother, but you have to wait on God's time. It is not when we feel good. It's not when we feel like we have the upper hand. Uh, the upper hand. It is always when God is ready. How many people know that when God get ready, you got to move? 
And so God begins to wait on Joseph to the point where Joseph couldn't control himself. He kicked everybody out the room, right? And he said, let me tell you what, I'm your brother. I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? How many people know that God is going to create a time where you can show your hand, where you can share your identity, but don't do it in advance. Wait on God. Number three, keep your mouth shut. Four principles of reconciliation. And number three is keep your mouth shut. I love uh, the word of the Lord. It says, but his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed at his presence. His brothers couldn't answer him. This may came up uh, a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember it? This may came up, be not dismayed. This may came up and it was funny that it would come up again. The brothers couldn't answer him because they was dismayed. What caught them off of guard? If you look up dismayed, is it is to be distressed about something unexpected to be distressed about something unexpected. They did not expect God to show up like he did. They didn't expect that their brothers would have survived that slavery experience. They certainly didn't expect him to be promoted to second in, a man, in command. There are some haters that's gonna be dismayed over what God is doing in your life. Let them hate. I'm not going to try to help you with your being dismayed. <laughs> God is going to do some unexpected things in your life. He's going to turn some situations in your, in your life around. He's going to promote you in the place where it seemed impossible, where folk would sell you out and God is going to get the glory and folks are going to be dismayed. You have to keep your mouth closed. Don't take a moment to say, I knew that's right. There you go. Don't take a moment to give them two snaps in a circle. Don't take, come on now. Don't take a moment to quack and, and strut like a peacock. Give all glory to God. Listen to this. If it had not been, come on somebody, for the Lord on my side. If it had not, I wouldn't have survived it. And not only does God promise that we'll survive it, he promised that we'll thrive in it. Listen, we got to keep our mouth closed. I, I think it will be irresponsible if I just tell you to keep your mouth closed and don't tell you why. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. You ever had some little kids and you say, don't you put your hand in that socket? And I tell you, as soon as you turn your back, what they do? <laughs> and, and so I, and let me help you. I'm going to give you uh, some reasons, if you will, to keep your mouth closed. Number one, keep your mouth closed because you on the brink of a breakthrough. Oh, I see you taking notes. Keep your mouth closed because you're on the brink of a major breakthrough and you don't want to mess it up with your mouth. A wise man said nothing. A wise man said nothing. There's a adage that we know that silence is golden. You remember that silence is golden? Before that, it says speaking is silver. Silence is golden. Speaking is silver. Silence is golden. Listen to this. Sometimes the most insightful thing that you can ever say is nothing. Sometimes the most insightful thing that you can ever say is nothing. If you are on the cusp of a major breakthrough, why share your hand? Why show your hand? Number B, when you get quiet, God start talking. When you get quiet, God start talking. Not only does God start talking, he start moving and he start having his way. 
For those people that don't believe it, I'm telling you, nobody on the planet can correct, repay, reprove, or tighten folk up like God. That's why the Bible says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my. Listen, don't amen, think amen. you do it better than God. You can't tighten folk amen. up better than God. You can't repay them better than God. Listen, you can't get them back better than God. Ain't nothing that you can do in your human self that can outbeat God. You can't bless nobody like God. Hello, somebody. And so leave it to God. Keep your mouth closed. When you get quiet, God will start talking. He'll start moving. He'll start have his way. And don't you interfere. Don't you interfere. Lastly, another reason to be quiet. Here, here is the atomic bomb. Kanika, I see you writing, but here's the atomic bomb. I'm getting ready to drop the atomic bomb. Listen. Wherever your enemies are, so is a table. Wherever your enemies are present, there's also a prepared table. Come on, Psalms. He'll prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Come on, somebody. Thou anointed. Come on now. Wherever your enemies are, so is your prepared table. Be quiet. It's no point. Let them see the table. Let them spread the table. It's fine. God's going to get the glory. You're going to be vindicated, promoted, and you'll be able to help your enemies because God will give you a heart of forgiveness. <laughs> I'm at the point where I don't just want to love my enemies. I want to help them. And that's good. Amen. I don't want to just love my enemies. Because if I love them and leave them there, they might try to hate again. I want to help them. I want to move them to a blessed place. They don't need to be near me. Hello, somebody. They don't need to be in my palace, but they can certainly be at the hill. <laughs> I mean, the foot of the hill. <laughs> Goshen. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> I, I just, I just think that there is revelation in what God is saying. I think there's great revelation in what God is saying. The last principle of reconciliation is don't be afraid to redefine your relationship with people that hurt you. Don't be afraid to redefine your relationship with people that hurt you. Doing that is a major key to moving forward. I'll give you an example. Verse four said, uh, Joseph said to his brothers, come near me, please. Come near me, please. The Hebrew verb that's used in this text uh, means more than proximity. It's not just come near me in proximity. It's almost like come near me for the purpose of embracing and giving a kiss. This is important because when people hurt you, the last thing you want them to do is be around you. When people hurt you, when people haven't been honest and they haven't been truthful and they've set up traps for you and laughed on the sidelines of, at your demise, you don't want those people anywhere around you. But the example that Joseph sets is he says, come near me. Let me redefine this relationship. Obviously, you don't know how to be brothers and sisters. And so I'm going to uh, redefine this. Come near me. Let us embrace each other. Now that you've had a, a change of heart, I can embrace you and you can embrace me now that your actions say you don't hate me no more. Oh, my gosh. Come on now. Repentance is it's, it's the mature way. Mature, repentance is the mature way. It's the godly way. If you out here still hating folks that's done stuff to you, you are not mature in Christ. I don't have to like it, but I got to love you. And I got to show you how to live better. 
I don't have to like it, but I got to love you. And I have a responsibility as your brother and sister to show you how to live brother better. So he brings them closer. He invites them into a new relationship, a new trusted relationship. And as they came closer, he was able to release more to them. He was able to tell them, I am your brother that you sold into slavery. He's not just hurling it over like a card, like he got the big joker, like this is a big test that he's embracing them and he's taking in consideration their feelings and how they may react to knowing that they sold him out and he's in this power. He's embracing them. Say, hey, listen, y'all, we, you know, we still brothers. I'm your brother who you sold into slavery, but look where you are. Look, I got you. That's interesting. Can we just let that marinate? Can you imagine that over Thanksgiving and Christmas? <laughs> can you imagine that type of spiritual maturity where you can forgive those who sold you out that really deeply hurt you? Here's two practical lessons from Joseph's relationship with God. And I think this is something that we all have to learn. Write them down, please. Number one, actually it's three lessons. Number one, you have to learn to relate everything to God. Every event in your life, whether it's good or seemingly bad, you have to relate that to God. Joseph had a lot of unfortunate things to happen to him, but he couldn't help but to see the Godness in it. And in fact, in verse 50, uh, in chapter 50, he's going to say uh, the famous quote, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Joseph was always relating where he was, his circumstance, his situation to God's plan. We got to learn how to do that, relate every event. It doesn't matter what it is. You lost a job, you got a job. It's because of God. Hello, somebody, you got a child, you lost a child. It's because of God. Come on, somebody, you bought a house, you lost a house. It's because of God. Come on, somebody. You, you, do you get that? Everything, everything. You got a good husband. It's because of God. You learned something in the marriage that didn't work out. It's because of God. Yeah? Number two, you must submit to God's sovereignty in every event of your life. No sense of fighting with God about how he's doing things in your life. Because if Romans 8 and 28 is true, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So stop fighting with God and start submitting to his sovereignty. He is in control. It is his will not yours. And you'll understand it better by and by. Oh, I wish I had somebody say, okay. If you can't say amen, say, okay. <laughs> I know this is a tough one, but I told you, get your notes out. We're going to need them. Uh, last one, express your forgiving and your loving spirit uh, non-verbally and then verbally. Express your forgiving and loving spirit non-verbally and then verbally at the right time. What are you talking about? Uh, Pastor, it's, it's funny. We always want to lead with our mouths. If you forgave somebody, you don't have to talk about it. You could just show the actions. That's what Joseph did. He showed the actions that he forgave his brother. You remember he put extra grain in their sacks? Do you remember that? He dealt with them fairly. He gave them privilege and preference and favor. So express that non-verbally so that you can, I'm gonna help you, so that you can watch people's actions. 
and then express it verbally at the right time. That's going to help you clear your heart. That's going to help you get to the point where you can love them and reconcile. When we start with, oh, I'm so sorry, and there's no actions behind it, as soon as a person make the first mistake, we're out the game. We put down now, draw four and reverse and skip. Oh, come on, nobody laugh. Y'all don't understand, Uno. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, as soon as somebody don't act the way that you think they should act because they said, I'm sorry, and they don't do it at a particular time, right? You're ready to apply the rules to a whole different game. Don't forget reverse. Reverse. Yes. And reverse. <laughs> and even throw out the wild card. <laughs> And so, so we have to be cognizant of that. I'm going to leave you now with five blessings of reconciliation. I know this may seem like you in class, but I believe that it will be irresponsible for me to do a lot of emotional preaching. Everybody got their own story. You can add the emotions later. Let me give you the tools to be successful. Five blessings of reconciliation that we find from this chapter. At the point of reconciliation, God approved reconciliation. God ordained reconciliation. The reconciliation that really requires the Holy Spirit to get involved, really requires for you to correct your attitude and submit to the sovereign will of God. When you get to that type of reconciliation, God is going to force favor to be pushed your way. He's going to force favor to be pushed your way. Come on, somebody say, Pastor, where'd you see that? It was right there in the scriptures about, um, about Joseph crying. Joseph cried when they were reconciled, when he exposed himself, when he started to tell them who he really was. He cried the allo, and the reason why he cried was because he was being 100% transparent. And it hurt him to know that his brothers put him into that situation, but he was glad to be able to move forward in his life. And so it caused him to cry and he wept so loud, come on somebody, that they heard him outside. When they heard him outside, they took the word to Pharaoh's palace. They said, Pharaoh, your boy is down here crying. I think he got reconnected with his brothers that sold him in slavery. Uh, Pharaoh then, his heart was softened and it broke his heart. No, he wasn't involved in it. But when you reconcile those people around you, those people who have watched the craziness, their hearts begin to break and they'll come in to say, how can I help you get back together? How can I help you to make this thing right? Oh, I wish I had some. So, so God will force favor to be pushed to the direction of you and your family. Number two, God will turn hearts. He'll turn hearts of the hated and the haters. He will turn the hearts of the hated and the haters. You didn't see um, Joseph trying to get back at his brothers at all, at all. You didn't see his brothers trying to play games before they would say anything that would wreck this reconciliation. They all decided to be quiet. How many people know that there is a gift of quietness? Before I open my mouth and wreck this next blessing, I'm just going to be quiet. God is setting you up to display his glory and his power. I know you don't like what's going on. I know it doesn't feel good. Sometimes it feels like somebody's setting you up, but God is just putting you on display to show his glory and his power. Well, why can this, why does this have to be a public event? Everybody, some people get in trouble and nobody knows about it. They just go on and we never hear about it again. Why am I in public? Why, uh, I can't talk about you. Let me talk about me. Why did Fitz have to die? 
Why did that have to be public? People lose kids all the time. People die all the time. It didn't have to happen to me. Why couldn't this happen to a non-public official? Because God is trying to display his glory. And he can trust you in it. And he can trust you with it. Wow. God is trying to dis display his glory, Robin. This had to happen. He can trust you in it. And he can trust you with it. The fourth blessing of reconciliation is that you will learn that God is your provider. That God is your provider. When he brings you into reconciliation, he does the unusual. He brings you into high ground where you'll never be hungry again. That God is going to re reconcile in a way that he's going to move me to a place where I'll never have to worry about this or anything else ever again. I wish I had somebody to say, okay, you know, have you ever seen God move you around? You like, God, wait a minute. Why do I have to go from here to there? To, I just want some stability. Amen. Amen. I just, Amen. I, I can't keep going from job to job and per, I can't. How many people feel like that? Amen. I, I just, I literally, I don't have to have much, but can I have some stability? God is showing you and you may be concerned about your stability, but God is concerned about his glory. And if his glory is I'm your provider. And he shows that he's your provider by a set of circumstances that look destabilizing, but God is stabilizing you in the spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, you know, last, the last blessing. You have to face it, but you don't have to fix it and you don't have to fight it. You got to face it, but you don't have to fix it. God will do it, and you don't have to fight it. The fight is over. We know from Joseph that he don't have to fight with his brothers. He never fought with them one time. He didn't fight with them. He didn't fight with them about his dream. He didn't fight with them about being thrown in the pit. He didn't fight with them about being sold into slavery. He didn't fight with them while he met and reconciled with them in the palace. The fight is over. Stop fighting. The fight is over. God is going to fix it. Just be faithful. No weapon, no liar, no demon, no sickness, no sentence will prosper. You are covered in the blood of Jesus. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. I love chapter 45. Chapter 45 was challenging. Chapter 45 really got to the heart of where we need to grow and mature as Christians. The question isn't about how to reconcile. The question is, are you ready to reconcile? Are you ready to reconcile? Or do you just wanna fight? Do you just wanna have contention? Do you just want to remember the things of the past and harp on all the things that didn't go right? Or are you ready to move to the greater? Are you ready to move to that place of blessing? Are you ready to move to the place that God has prepared for you? Even the haters God prepared Goshen for. Man. God prepared Goshen. If you go back and find the uh, place of Goshen, Goshen was a place of rest. It was a place of rest. God has even prepared a place of rest for the haters. Once they repent it, they can put that down. And I keep saying they, but sometimes we've been a hater too, even if it's just to ourselves. 
Come on, somebody. Sometimes you hate yourself so much you allow yourself to get put in situations. You don't think a lot of what you are, who you are and who God called you to be that you would risk it all and put yourself in situations. God has rest for you. God has rest for his children. God has rest for those who love him. God has rest for those who repent and serve him. God has rest and room for all of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can you just unmute, put your hands together and say, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank, thank you. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, thank you for your Lord. forgiveness. Thank, thank you for your love. Thank, thank you, God, you. for your healing. Thank, thank you, God, you. for turning thank me you. around. Thank you, God, for using even this situation to get yes. some glory out of it. Thank, thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. We thank you so much for joining us today. Maybe there's someone here that's listened to the message today. Maybe there's somebody here that's listened and you say, I've, I've been like Joseph. I've been through a Joseph experience, but I want to match my faith with Joseph. That I want to put my hands in God's hands like Joseph. If you're here and you want to commit, you want to receive salvation, why don't you just type in salvation in your text bar? If you wanna receive Christ, if you wanna be saved, if you wanna make sure without certainty, without any type of uncertainty, that your life is in God's hands, why don't you just type in salvation? Maybe you want to recommit. You've been saved and you've walked along with God, but your life path has been rocky. Somehow you've turned back, you slowed up, you stepped to the side. If you'd like to recommit your life to Christ right now, just type in the text box, recommit. Perhaps you want to join the church. You've been listening Sunday after Sunday, but you want to get to work that you want to put actions to your repentance. Why don't you just type in join? I want to join. Our deacons and our ministers are online, ready to serve you this morning. Perhaps you're here and you need prayer. Perhaps you're here and you just need prayer. I'll ask that you lift your hands with me and repeat after me, Father, I love you. I put my life in your hands. You know every cir circumstance, you know, circumstance and situation in my life. Situation in my life. I play, place it at your feet today, Lord. Place it at your feet today. Save me. Save me. Come into my life. Come into my life. And take it over. And take it over. Let your glory be shown. Let your glory be shown. In everything we do. In everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, if you have repeated that prayer, I believe that the Lord is uh, excited about your turnaround and your future. The Lord loves you. Uh, the one thing I love about him, he doesn't give up on us. That his love is not conditional and it's not fickle. That every day that he wakes up with new mercies and he wakes us up with new mercies. And so we thank God for his mercies on this morning. We pray that you would get involved with Holy and Whole, find a way to connect with us. We're easy to find uh, and begin to go deeper in the word. We have a wonderful Bible study, interactive Bible study that will take you deeper into this word. It'll help you decode it. It'll help you apply the word to your life. Please join us right here 
uh, on this same social network channel and, and, and 7.30 on Wednesday. Watch Pastor King, engage with Pastor King and go deeper and apply, learn how to apply the word of God to your life. Listen, there are ways that you can connect with this ministry through giving. There are several ways. One of the ways that you can connect through, uh, to this ministry through giving is to give online. That the work of this ministry doesn't happen through osmosis. That we need hands and feet and we need financial support to continue to support the work of the ministry in Loudoun and around the world. So I would ask you to go online to holyandwhole.org and give. Use uh, the PayPal donation button to give. Or you can text to give now. If you take a moment and text 833-203-6805. And if you could just text give and you could choose your amount. Maybe you can cash app. I love cash app. Dollar sign HW. LCMI, HWLCMI. Try these ways to give and connect with us in serving. We're going to be celebrating 15 years in ministry uh, on the weekend of the 19th, 20th, and 21st in November. I ask you to come out and be a part. We will be having uh, live services that Friday night. Uh, Dr. Decca Tapscott will be here. Oh my gosh. If you do not know Dr. Decca Tapscott, you just got to come meet him. Dr. De Decker Tapscott is one of the most uh, prophetic, prolific preachers on this side of Virginia. So I ask that you would just come and be with us in service on that Friday night. On the Saturday, uh, we will have our annual community prayer breakfast. I ask that you would get your tickets. Tickets are about $60. Get your tickets and uh, get ready to hear an anointed word from our friend and brother, Pastor Jesse Rafford. Pastor Jesse Rafford. You could do $60 per person or just go ahead and buy a table. Buy a table, invite all your friends to come out. Uh, maybe we can try reconciliation, buy a table and get all your friends and folks that's been, come on, I don't want to say it, go ahead, this is a good place to reconcile. Man, Sunday man. morning, Sunday morning, Dr. Ralph Martino will be in the house right here in Ashburn. So if you want to join us, we invite you to come, the tiny URL, URL link is there. Uh, make it a point to come celebrate with us 15 years serving the Lord, 15 years working in our community, 15 years of life changing ministry. And so I am so happy to have this milestone and to celebrate it with all of you. Come on, be a part of it. Let's get excited. Our girl, Mary Tucker is coming up from Virginia Beach. We love you. We give you thanks. You're awesome. Listen, it's only one way to leave here. Only one way to leave here, and that's going forward, never looking back. Come on, what you got? What you shaking, Pastor? Come, come on, unmute and tell us what you're shaking. Communion. First Sunday, communion. Oh, we got communion. Uh oh, hold on one second. Pastor is shaking the communion bag. Let me go ahead. Well, Pastor, why don't you take care of communion? Let me get my sacrament ready and we're ready to go. Hold on. Amen. 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 Alan. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We bless God on today for all that he has done, for all that he has uh, moved, the way he has moved in us um, and through Pastor Michelle on today. We are honored to be in this place and to be at another first Sunday where we can recognize and observe uh, what the Lord has done through the sending of his son. Amen. <laughs> And this is why we come together on first Sunday to remember, um, God gave it to us as a memorial to remember, to consider uh, what Christ has done for us. Amen. And mm -hmm. so at this time, just before we actually um, take our communion, we certainly want to ask that you would bow your heads with us um, as we go into prayer. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now. We thank you for opportunity. We thank you because you loved us so much that you sent your son. And so just before we um, actually participate in our communion, we ask that you would search us each one. And if you find anything that's not like you, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would take it out. We ask, oh God, that you would 
uh, restore. We ask, oh God, that you would heal. We ask, oh God, that you would forgive. We ask, oh God, that you would set us up in a way that we will be meet for your use and that as we go forward, we will remember uh, the sacrifice of Christ in our place. We thank you, we love you, we lift you, and we magnify you. It is in the name of your precious son, Jesus, that we lift this prayer and we say amen. 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 Pastor Michelle has gotten what she needs, gotten her sacrament and gotten back to the table. Come on, y'all. Let's let's get ready to do this thing together. Uh, We often read the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I like to read it at the time of communion because I like to um, illuminate the words of the scripture. Listen, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, uh, that the Lord Jesus, the same night um, in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it um, and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, uh, this do in remembrance of me, you may eat. And after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. You may drink. And so we honor God for opportunity to share, for opportunity to remember. We honor him for the gift that he gave us that we could not give ourselves. And so on today, as we prepare to leave this setting, uh, we leave remembering what God has done uh, for us. Come on, everybody, unmute yourselves. Let's wind it up and let's get ready to go home from this place. Amen. Yeah. There's only one way to leave a holy and whole service, a holy and whole gathering. And that is to understand and to remember that God never does less than he's already done. But he is a forward moving God. Come on, everybody. This is how we go home. We go forward. 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 Jesus is his name. We Amen. love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. We will Amen. see you on Wednesday. Amen. 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 Amen.